this video I just wanted to um, talk about my, I guess, design process with, with this bass. Um, it was a bit of a concept bass for me, I suppose, and I was, there was something that I wanted to achieve with it. Um, this, the story behind it basically looks, stems from a previous bass that I owned. I had a 20th anniversary Music Man Stingray 5, or the 25th anniversary, but celebrating the anniversary of the five-string bass uh, manufactured by Stingray and Ernie Ball. I was really attracted to that bass, I guess, because I liked the dual humbucker idea. Um, it had some really good switching options with the dual humbuckers, and I've always liked the fat Music Man humbuckers. I've always just thought they're really cool, and they, they do get a really cool sound. Um, and also, I guess, the fact it was a five-string too. Um, I played that bass for a while. I ended up trading it off though, that mainly because the positioning of the neck humbucker on those Stingray 5 strings is too close to the fretboard and it's really uncomfortable to slap and pop. Some guys will tell you that it's fine, you get used to it, it's no worries, but for me it was pretty much a deal breaker. And it's a shame because it was an awesome bass, I really liked it. But it just, um, it just wasn't going to work out for me. Because keep in mind that this, the five string has, I think, one or two extra frets compared to the four string, so it brings it even closer. And I really think that where they put that humbucker on that bass, it just doesn't need to be that far up. Um, but anyway, that's where it is, and I, I ended up trading that bass off for a Warwick thumb neck through four string. And that was a cool bass. I mean, I love the Warwick thumb. It really is its, its own instrument. You know, there's so many copies of jazz basses, P basses, and Stingrays out there in the world. The uh, the thumb really is its its own thing. It's in a, in a category of its own. And I really enjoyed playing that. It's got a really fat, punchy sound. Um, I guess I got frustrated that it didn't have a low B string, but also it had a bit of neck dive, and you can kind of find ways of compensating it with certain straps and stuff. But ultimately, I found myself always having to, you know, prop the neck back up a little bit, and, you know, ultimately it shouldn't have to be a deal breaker, something like that, but I just kind of got a bit frustrated with it. So what I did is I sold that off, and I guess I used the, that to, to fund this you know, this bass here. And I guess what I did is I took the elements that I really liked about those two instruments specifically and got rid of the things that I didn't like and I also added in a couple of extra sort of trademark um, things just for my own uh, for my own benefit. So really I guess if you sort of track back and look at what's on here, um, the colour scheme, you know, is pretty much inspired by the Warwick, you know, the dark brown woods, the natural finished neck. 24 frets, the black hardware, so you know, I guess that's a little bit of a uh, tribute to to the Warwick thumb bass there. The dual humbucker and the music music man style humbucker, look obviously I've taken that from the um, from the Stingray that I had um, and looked, I mean the active preamp, I mean look I guess both of those basses had different but you know equally good uh, preamps in them. It's got the same string spacing as a Music Man Stingray, 17.5 millimeters. Um, yeah, and so I guess like so they're the, the sort of the design elements that I that I brought into it. So when I was planning the bass, look, really I started off with the woods. I really liked the look of the uh, black Carina. I liked the grains in it. I liked what I had learnt about their tonal um, characteristics. So I went from there. I got a got them to route it for the dual humbuckers um, and finished in a tobacco burst. Um, I chose Bartolini um, just look they've, they've got a fantastic reputation I've got I've had them in other bases before and they really are top-notch so I guess my own sort of trademark elements to this space are the, the choice of you know Bartolini for the electronics a 35 inch scale sets it aside from other bases and also the switching for these two, two pickups. Um, I've explained it a bit more in, in my uh, other video with the sound samples, but you know while the Stingray had good switching options, you've got five different choices, um, this has got even more. I think I've got basically 14 different options for switching, because for each pickup I can have in the down position, it's uh, running the, the bridge side coil, in the middle it's running the humbucker in series mode, 
and in the up position it's just going to be running the neck side coil. And when I use the blend knob, you know, I can run any combinations of basically four, four separate coils. Um, I can run this in humbucker and one of any, either one of these coils or any number. And so with that, I can basically mimic the pickup configuration of a bunch of different bases. You know, by using the two outer coils, it's going to, you know, it's, it's going to emulate a uh, Fender Jazz bass. By using the two inner coils, it's going to emulate a Stingray configuration. By using just the rear humbucker, it's kind of like the Warwick Thumb Bass 5 spacing. They've got two single coils back close to the bridge. If I use this bridge side humbucker and this, um, sorry, the bridge side coil here and the bridge side coil here, that's kind of like the Warwick four string thumb configuration. Um, and anyway, and there's any, any number of other um, options in there. Check out my other video for, you know, examples of those. So look, that was that was my thinking that went into this bass, you know, it's a combination of the, uh, the Stingray 5 HH, the Warwick Thumb, but then I've added my own my own flavours to it. And that's how I got into this bass, and I absolutely love it, I'm really happy with it. It's it's nailed everything that I want, um, got it on, nailed it on the head. Um, I would really encourage anyone to, to think about doing a Warmoth, Warmoth build project, it's a very satisfying end result. I got this built by a local luthier, Jim Cargill, and um, I, w I would suggest that it's a pretty good idea to, to get it assembled by a luthier, unless you're really strapped for cash or you're really confident in your ability to um, put it all together. Um, most A lot of bases do need a, a fret level as well. Um, Warmoth doesn't need it quite as much as, um, as other brands like All Parts. But um, look, my luthier, you know, I mean, he does a lot of work on Warmoth bases, and it generally, you know, you are going to get a really polished, professional um, instrument at the end if you do get it set up by a, a luthier. You can you can do it yourself. It just might just be oh, not quite um, not quite as good as it could be. Um, but if you're not too fussy, maybe don't worry about it. Um, but look, my only other tip for people, I guess, who are thinking of doing a um, you know, like a warmth build, is to sort of think of some sort of concept, you know, when you're doing it. I mean, what, what do you want to use it for? What do you like about other instruments? What, you know, what are the, what do you want to, what elements do you want to take from one or, you know, get rid of that's been frustrating you on another instrument? So, like I said, this is a tribute to those two bases and then with my own spin on it. Um, but, I mean, you might have a particular player that you want to be, you know, it, the instrument is inspired by, it might be one like you want to make sure that it's like a funk machine or like a rock beast or something like that or you know you might want it to be like a mother of nature wood you know tribute to the woods or something like that whatever you like anyway that's my commentary on my base um thanks for watching and um look by all means if you've got any any um questions or comments let me know